you want us to get it. You want us to get it. And Father, I know that as we lead, as we're being led into a deeper walk with you, uh, even that, Lord, you're teaching us how to walk, how to listen, and how to be obedient, Lord. Because in our disobedience, Lord, it delays your blessing in our life. And your purpose is delayed. So, Father, we ask, help us this morning in Jesus' name. We pray also for that young man this morning, Lord, Farron. I just pray for his heart, Lord. A man of giving his heart to you, Lord, and there's a lot of complications, a lot of things going on. And we just pray for healing in his life, deliverance in his life, Father. You only can breathe upon him, Lord, and speak to his heart. We just bring a freshness into his heart today. And his whole family, Lord, we just ask protection around him, Lord, today, in Jesus' lovely name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John chapter 4, and we'll start with that chapter. John chapter 4. Praise God. I want to um, touch on something that's a, basically a follow-on to everything else. Um, we got a penny or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to ta- I've been tap into this area. Well, not wanting to, but I have been flowing in this area most of my life, and um, still learning to understand the um, the the prophetic ministry and um, seeing miracles and seeing things God work in that way. But one of the things about the prophetic ministry is that everyone is called to be a watchman. And um, the, what we watch over is specifically the word. Because the word will come at different season, and the word will come even before it's time to the prophetic people to hold on to that until the time comes. And there is a watching over, an ability that God's given us to do that. And uh, <clears throat> I want to touch into those areas this morning. I want to put up on the board here because a lot of us don't understand prophetic. A lot of people don't understand it because they never experienced it. Um, they've never. So I want to put on here the, the three rivers that I've been touching on. Give me the. Uh, I got, I'm all shaky here now. Three rivers I've been touching on <clears throat> over the last few months, and it's a and it's a continuation of what happens because if we don't understand the the, the, the significance of these the, these rivers that are flowing in the earth, these rivers that are flowing within us, we will not understand how to come into what God has for us. So there is that prophetic. There is the prophetic river. That God is wanting to move upon. And I want to touch on this area here today. I have ministered and touched on Priestly, Priestly River. And then there's the Kingly River. And I want you to understand that these rivers that are flowing within our, within our, in our heart are specifically flowing for a specific reason. They are not just given to people just for the sake of having fun. It's to deal with certain things in, our, in the church life. It's to deal with our hearts. And so when we understand, and I've been ministering on this area of the priestly ministry, and I've said this, that without this ministry, if we don't function as a priest or understand its role, then these areas here suffer because we cease to, priest, uh, we cease to function as a priest before God. When you look at the Passover Pentecost, when you look at Passover, Pentecost, and you've got tabernacles, and you've got the, the feast, the seven feast, right? Pentecost stands alone. This is the day where it is the center point that holds these two feasts together. Without the Spirit of God, we will not understand the power of Passover. We will not understand the power of Pentecost, and we would not even understand the power of tabernacle workings and the tabernacle of what it is. So the Holy Spirit stands alone. The day of Pentecost stands alone in order for us to understand that from the center point, this ministry of the priest 
starts to flow and starts to function. At the same time, the prophetic as well and the kingly as well. This anointing here, the kingly, flows from the throne room of God. It's a river that flows from the throne room of God. And it attaches, attaches, it atta taps itself to the earth. Sorry, I'm a bit, bit, a bit all over the place this morning. Just got thrown out this morning. <laughs> Bless the Lord to my brother. But uh, we've got to understand that um, the kingly anointing is, 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 a, is a definite move of his anointing. When it comes to kingly anointing, it always depends on the price that you pay here. The price that you pay here puts weight upon the prophetic and puts weight upon the king, the anointing. When you, go, you don't pay any price here, you, get, you don't get this flowing in your life. Amen? We are called kings and priests in the earth because Jesus, what Pastor Errol was saying this morning, Jesus paid a price. The weight of the sacrifice always brings about the weight of the glory. If you don't have no weight, you have no glory. We don't see the glory of God manifesting in the church like it should be because the weight of the sacrifice is not happening. Amen? We give praise to God in our own personal life. We give glory to God in our own time. But when it comes to a corporate body of Christ, a corporate people that are giving sacrifice to the Lord, the weight of the glory, the weight of the sacrifice brings down the weight of the glory. Amen? And the weight of the glory not only manifests through you, it will come on you. Amen? And sometimes you, it'll knock you on the floor, and pick you up and it'll carry you out because the glory sits on you. It's a weight. Amen? A couple of times they had to carry me out into my home, throw me in the bed. Well, not like that, but put me in the bed. And I couldn't wake up until the next morning because the glory is heavy on you. Amen? And in that heaviness, the Holy Spirit is still teaching you and still speaking to your life while you're lying still. It's in the place of death. Amen? You die. He lives. He is still living while you're sleeping under the glory. Amen? And there's a lot to be said in that. I don't touch into that area because... It's personal. I don't touch into that area because it's genuine. It's, it's not something you just throw out. Amen? Because there is a level of his word that flows from this kingly anointing. Amen? There is a level of his word that flows from the prophetic level. There is a level that flows because the priest ministry is functioning and ministering unto God. Amen? So when we look at this area here, the center point holds and functions the whole counsel of God to, our, to the body of Christ. Without the Spirit of the Lord, you take the Holy Spirit out, then these feasts will die. Amen? That's what's happening in the earth today to a lot of uh, people at the moment. They, they don't have the Spirit of the Lord, but they still function in the Passover ministry. They still function in the feast, right? It was an interesting story in John where John, where the disciple says, Lord, it's time for the feast. Do you want to come? And the Lord says, no, I don't want to go. You go, brethren. You go to the feast, but I will not come. And then the scripture says that as they went to the feast to celebrate the feast, the Bible says that Jesus got up and he walked to the, to the feast, but he hid himself behind the feast. Amen? I love that kind of thing. I love it because no one sees the prophetic. Only the prophetic sees the prophetic. Amen? No one sees that word that you got in your heart. Only you see it. Because God came and breathed it upon you while you were sleeping or while you were walking or working or doing something. Out of the blue, God spoke a word to you and it came without you even thinking about it. God spoke a word into your heart. And what he's saying is that, watch over that word, son. You're a watchman. I called you to be a watchman over my word. Amen? Even before you were born, talks to Jeremiah, even before you were born in your mother's womb, amen, I put that word in you, amen? And I've nurtured your character so that when you grow up, when you grow up, you will understand that that word has nurtured you, where you, as, you as a child, growing up, growing up. And as a man now, you will understand now it's coming through you, amen? And you're beginning to understand the call in your life, amen? And so the word chases after you, because it's in you. 
you cannot run away from the word because there is a prophetic anointing upon that word. There is a price that was paid in order for the prophetic anointing to come upon that word. Amen? This is what I've been feasting on all my life. If I'm not, not hearing prophetic words coming through, I get bored because people are talking religious. People are talking out of deadness. They don't, they don't have... They don't have the experience of the prophetic. They have the experience of his letters, of his word, but they don't have the experience of the spirit of his word. That's totally different. And so when, when you see that, people can be filled up with his, with his word, but not the spirit of his word. The spirit of his word sits in the prophetic realm. And the prophetic realm always is activated because you activate this ministry right here. And when you start to function in this area here, the Holy Spirit also will tap into the kingly anointing. Amen? I have seen rivers flow in the, in the body of Christ. I've seen, it flow, I've seen it flow heavily in the body of Christ. I see the river flowing. It's the, it's your eyes open up to another dimension. I've seen it flow. And amongst the people, the river will go up and it will talk, go to that particular person. Uh, brother, you need to come out, or sister, God is wanting to say to you is this. But the river flows, and because of that, this is, listen to me carefully, this kingly anointing, this priestly kingly anointing, has its own government, has its own order. It is outside of church structure. Nothing wrong with church structure. We need church structure, right? We need it. That's just automatically. But I like what Paul says. Well, you attend to the tables, we need to attend to the word of God. Amen? So there are those who are in the body of Christ who are administratively clever. I, they, they, I like the way they do it. They just, they just know how to organize things. I like that. I, I just watch them. That's good. And I, I, I get blessed by that. But when it comes to the word, that's where my standing is. That's where I stand upon. I am more focused on that to, um, to manage the word that's in me, that's growing in me. That is the, the realm of the prophetic because his responsibility is to deliver the word of the Lord to the body of Christ. That's his responsibility. He's a watchman over the word of God. Amen? And a watchman stands on the wall. Oh, glory. He stands on the wall. He sees what's coming, and he sees what's coming on that side. He sees what's coming north, right, left, right, and center because he's standing and the reason why he stands is because the enemy is after the word that he has received from God. Amen? He's after that word. But he knows how to protect that word. He knows how to watch over that prophetic word that it's for the people of God. It's not just for him, it's for the people of God. And that word is for a season and a time to be delivered. Amen? for a person in the body of Christ, for a people in the body of Christ. Amen? A wall. When I was in PNG, the last time I was in PNG with my pastor, Pastor Brian, my brother. I don't know why I'm at his name. Bless the Lord. Yeah, he, he, as we ministered there, I remember I was watching him preach. And uh, I was sitting there and he was preaching away and I just saw him step across. And I saw it and I said, and I looked at, I said, and I turned to the people and I said, did you see that? And then when I looked to the people, this wall came down upon the people, this huge colorful wall. And I knew what it was. And all the stones in the wall were all different colors. And I knew, I knew what that wall was. I knew what it was. These were the prayers of the watchmen that had prayed over their land that had prayed over, their, over the body of Christ. And God had nailed and put them into the wall. They were watchmen watching over the word of God. And they're still watching for that word to come because God has prepared them. And I saw it and I said, praise the Lord, blue, green, beautiful colors, just unreal. People who paid a price, people who gave their lives for the word, people who said, Lord, I'm here, send me. These were men and women who were able to stand and pray through. One of the things about the watchman is that he will pray through a barrier. 
He will pray through difficulties. He will pray through anything that hinders the word from coming through. Amen? And as he looks upon the people, he sees the people struggling. He will pray for the people's hearts. He will pray for the battles that they're going through because he can sense it. This is the eye of the prophetic. He sees what others don't see. Amen? He hears what others don't hear. Amen? Others are coming, just coming along, and do, but he has that ear. He can hear the sound of a word. He can hear a, a, a wind coming. He can hear some movement in God. It's an ear of prophetic. And the eye of the prophetic. Amen. John chapter 4. I haven't forgotten it. Amen. John chapter 4. I want you to understand something. I want to draw out a picture here. Now, if I can draw this picture, I'm not a good picture drawer, but um, I'll do the best I can, right? These are little plants. This is a well that Jesus went to, the Jacob's well, if I can just do something like this. I think that's right. That's the well, anyway, okay? But underneath the well, it went down. That well in John chapter 4 went down to 55 meters, and it went down deep. But it went down, and there was a river beneath it. Amen? Beneath that well, there is a river. These are the rivers that flow. They are at the depths of where God has hidden his word. When you talk about the prophetic, when you talk about the priest, when you talk about the kingly order, when you talk about these things, they are in the depth of this river that is hidden by God, and that is just not thrown out to anybody and everybody. That's why God chose Moses. He chose Abraham. He chose specific people for, 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 for specific tasks. He chose them because he had to put a specific word in them. Amen? God just doesn't throw his word out. In fact, the Bible says that his word is above his name. Amen? In other words, his name is his word anyway. So... When God speaks a word into your life, he is saying to you, you are responsible for that word that I put in your spirit. Amen? This word that came where everybody else didn't hear it, but you did. You heard that word in the river of your spirit. Amen? You heard it in the depth of your soul. And no man has an ear to hear that physical ear to hear it. Only the prophetic ear can hear it. And only the prophetic eye can see the river and hear the river flowing in the depths of the well. Amen? So when we look at the well and we look at the river, they are two different experiences that people have in the church life, have in God. One of the tasks of the prophetic office, one of the tasks in ministry of the prophetic office is to reveal the transgressions of people's hearts is to speak the heart of people of where they're at, not to condemn them, but to bring them to a place of acceptance and saying, yes, it is me. God, in his heart, never overrides people's will. Your will is a free will from God, but he will create circumstances around you so that you make the right choice, or you can make the wrong choice and say, no, God, I don't want you. It's your free choice. God has given you a free will. He will never override it. Amen? But he will, give you, he will create such circumstances where you make the right choice. Amen? I remember when the Lord touched my heart at 16 years of age, spoke a word over my life. I was playing football at the time, Australian rules, and I was playing, playing there, and all I could think about was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Not, not game, 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 but Jesus, Jesus. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, Jesus, Jesus. And the football fellows running around fighting each other there. And I'm standing there, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm watching it all. And it got to the point where I said, I've done this. I've done this, you know. I can see where the game's going. I can see where the play's going. I'm tired of this. And all I could think of was Jesus, Jesus. And I just went, see you later, guys. I just walked off the field. <laughs> walked off the field, back into the, into the change room. And... Uh, got my gear off, put my clothes on and walked out and never turned back because the name of Jesus came alive in me, amen, and it chased after me. And from that point on, I've been chasing the Lord ever since. But what I'm saying is that when a prophetic word comes on you, you don't create it, he does. 
He breathes it into your life without you even expecting it. Amen? And that comes with the responsibility that you, you and I have. Everyone here today, I want to tell you something, that I want to stir up and wake up the mighty man in you. That mighty man in you has been, has been knocked down by religious traditions. It has stopped you from coming to your fullness. And the main task of this prophetic ministry is to spot the religious system and the traditions that have stopped you from coming into your full potential as a man and a woman of God. Amen? We've been so mind-boggled by traditions, and that's one of the enemy of, of this prophetic move, is the traditions and the mindsets of men and women in the house of God who, who stop, always hinders, and stop the prophetic from flowing in the heart of a person. Amen? And God says this, I had enough. He will deal with it. The season is open. I'm telling you that because it's in me. It's open. You don't hear that openness, but I do. The prophetic does. Amen? It moves in my heart. The season's opened up. And God is, will deal with anything that is religion, anything that is tradition. Amen? Anything. Hallelujah. So, I want to do this. So here's the river the three rivers that are flowing beneath the well. Jesus said that if you drink of me, there will come rivers of living waters flowing out of you. This living water comes because you understand that. Up here, the well, there are many people who are at the well. They draw only 55 meters and they get revelation from the Lord. And they rejoice because they got a revelation from God. And they live their life forever around this level of the well. And they never come to the depth of prophetic. And I'll tell you why. Because someone, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is because they could have been offended by the church. Or they could have got hurt by someone in the church. Or they know that there is a prophetic call on their life, but they're too scared to go there. Amen? They know that there is a call. To, I'll tell you, there's many other people like that in the, in the house, too many, running from God because they know that God's put a prophetic call on their life. And they're running. They're, they're running. But God's put a word in their heart, you see. And that word of the prophetic says, come, awake, mighty men, in the book of Joel. Awake, mighty men. It's time to wake up. And we need to understand that there is a, there is a governmental authority that's been established, which is the kingdom of God, the governmental kingdom of God being established in the earth by these men, by these mighty men of God, and these prophetic moves of God, these men and women who carry the prophetic need to understand it's not just a call and a gift on their life. It's a responsibility to put in place the order of Melchizedek. It's an order that comes into your heart and everything that is out of order will be out of order and the prophetic removes the disorder in order to bring about the order because he has the ability to do that. The river in his life causes him to do that. Amen? What did Ezekiel do? Oh, take this man. Man brought him into the river up to his ankle, and then he walked into the river a bit more, up to his knees. Then he walked him into the river, up to his loins. Then he walked him into the river. Oh, this river is too strong. It's too much. I cannot handle it anymore. That's where a lot of people back away. Hello? They've experienced the ankle. Oh, glory to God. I don't know how to do that dance, but yeah. <laughs> glory to God. And then they get into the knees. Oh, glory to God. Well, I don't know whether they do that or not. But, <laughs> but they, they swim around in the knees ankle of revelation and they, oh, praise the Lord. Brother, you need this revelation. Yeah, let me tell you, you need it, brother. Amen. <laughs> and then they get into the loins. And then they start doing the hula. Nah, gammon, no. Nah. They get into the loins of production. 
they start to understand a little bit more about God and they start to understand that, hey, I've got to be impregnated. I've got to impregnate others. I've got, and they start to re- realise there's a depth here that they've never come into. And this man that brought Ezekiel in was Jesus himself bringing the order in. And he was saying, come through. But now, the Lord says, now that you understand about impregnation of my word, now I will bring you into the depth of a river that is too strong for you to control. Here, in the ankle, I can control this. Hallelujah. In the knees, I'm still in control. Uh, This is too much for me, God. I'm out of here. Amen. But when the ang- when I'm up here, I can, I'm still in control. I can move out of the anointing. Or I don't want to fulfill this, God. But when I'm in the river, I'm out of control. The river takes over. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to understand that there is a change that is happening. Listen to me, folks. Let me, understand. Let me get this clear to you. We have come to the well and we have set our lives around the well. And we have spent our lives just getting revelation at this well. But down below, there is a, a river that, that, that is wanting to just flow even more. And I tell you now, here, the river, a lot of gifts flow. Amen? People chase gifts. Nothing wrong with that. People have gifts. Nothing wrong with that. But when you live off the gifts and you start to take your eyes off Jesus and look for the gift only, that's when you start to go wrong. Amen? Because you acknowledge the gift more than him. And his heart grieves over the fact that he gives men and women his heart, and they take it, and they run with the revelation, and they pour it on their ministry. And they get the glory for it. I had it up to here with that kind of behavior. I've seen it all my life where people get the glory for it. It's not for them, it's for the people that have a broken heart, a people that is lost, a people that don't know and understand the ankle experience, a people that don't understand the knee, don't understand the loins, don't understand the river, have no idea of a river that is flowing beneath the well. And only the prophetic voice, only the kingly voice, only the priest that ministers to the Lord, will the Lord ever bring the prophetic to the people here, will tell them and show them that there is a river that is deeper than the well. Amen. We have lived our lives at the well for so long. We know how to go there. You don't have to teach me. I know how to go there. Why? Because I am in control. I can go to the well whenever I want to, and I can pull out whenever I want to. Oh, I got offended today. I'm not coming back to that church. I'm not coming back to that well. We're in control. But God's trying to say, I'm going to release my prophetic word. I'm going to release a word that will wake you up. I'm going to release a word that you will know know and understand that offenses and behaviors and attitudes will not stop you from coming in and hearing the level of the river of life inside you. Amen. Hallelujah. I like what Jesus said. When he spoke, let's have a read of it, eh? just so I, I can get you a point here I want to make. John chapter 4. Praise the Lord. I can get that fellow on my phone. He used all my battery up now. <laughs> Someone's got a Bible. I'll probably sing out for it soon. Praise the Lord. But John chapter 4. Let's have a read of it. Hallelujah. In verse 9. Let's go drop down to verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, unto Jesus, who was sitting at the well, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Jews. Jesus answered in verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says unto thee, Give me a to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 11, And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. 
from whence then hast thou living water? She called it. She didn't say water. She said living water. She heard what he said. In other words, she had ears to hear. But because she didn't have it around her to encourage her, she was lost in the marriages that she was. She was trying to find them in... She was, that's why she got married to the, She was trying to find that prophetic in them. But there was nothing in them. Amen? Anyway, verse 12. Thou art greater than our father. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, this natural water, shall thirst again. And verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. This is where the river of life starts to bubble up inside you when you're asleep. That's when the word starts to annoy you when you're at work. That's when the word starts to annoy you wherever you are driving in a vehicle. You start to get this bubbling inside you. The Lord is bringing a word from a level because he's starting to trust you, starting to understand that this man's heart is after me and not just the revelation that I give him. Amen? Or give her. Jesus said unto him and unto her, this is what Jesus challenged her now, said unto her, go call your husband and come hither. Verse 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, and I like this, thou hast well said, I have no husband. I like that. Verse 18, thou hast heard that thou hast had five husbands, Jesus telling her now, you've had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And I like what Jesus said now, in that, saidest thou truly. In other words, Jesus was saying, you're telling the truth of where your condition is. You're speaking the truth. That's what I want from my people. They, they, they hide. They don't want to talk about it. They, don't want, they, they do everything to tell me the truth about the heart. Just tell me the truth and I know then I can show you the prophetic river of life. Because that's what's stopping you. That's why you can't hear it. Because you've not told the truth to your five husbands. Amen? You've not told them. And the man that you're not even married now is getting that way now. Come on. What he's saying is to the church. He's saying to the church. The woman is the church. He's saying to the church, we are married to many other things. The Lord says, tell me the truth about your heart. Why are you chasing after that? Tell me the truth. Why are you chasing after that? Amen. And the Lord will, will tell you that. He said, well, Lord, it's because, you know, because of, Lord said, I want to take you to the depth of where you're hurting. I want to take you to the depth of where you're offended. And tell me the truth when I reveal it to you. Amen. Oh, there's a lot of hearts here being pricked right now. I can feel it. That river stirring there. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. Because God, God wants you to be free. He wants you to be telling the truth about you. Oh, Lord, you are a true God. You are a true and holy God. And the Lord says, well, are you telling the truth too? Because I know I'm true, but you're not. <laughs> Tell the truth of how you really feel. I said to the Lord when I was young, when I was angry with him, and I told this before and I'll say it again. Oh, who? What do you want to pick me for? I'm nobody. I got no education. I was bad at school. I was always first in the class, but at the wrong end. <laughs> true. That's the honest truth. Always first, but last at the wrong end. The only time I ever succeeded was when I got to come up to some, some area in the, in the room, but I cheated. <laughs> That's the only time. <laughs> My friend, he, yeah, 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 yeah. Run that down. The teacher looked at me, mm, I don't know, Mr. Lambton. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Why pick me, Lord? I'm nobody. And that's why I went out and played football and did all that other, other things. I got, I got the ability to do those things, to be someone, to be successful. You know what I mean? Wasn't successful at school. Didn't want to know school. You know, became, became the Queensland player 
was the best player in, in, out of sports one year. I was the best player for the one year. All those kind of things, but that didn't mean anything to me afterwards when the Lord came to me. Didn't mean anything. Eleven best and fairest used to have it on my wall, and guess what I'd done with them all? All in the bin. Whole eleven trophies of best and fairest, all in the, in the bin. Didn't want to know about it. Amen? Unsuccessful. Why do you pick me? That's why I'm argument to the Lord, and I'm telling the truth now. Why? I am nobody. And this is what he said to me. And you're just the person I'm looking for. <laughs> My mouth went, okay then. <laughs> you don't argue when you get a clear word <laughs> just straight back at you. Tell the truth about how you feel. Many of us, we don't do that. We hide our fears. We hide our feelings. We don't tell anybody. Tell them. Tell them. Yeah, there's a point where you don't tell people, obviously. But when it comes to God, God I've been trying to, you know, really... Trying to get through. I'm just, I just I don't understand it, Lord. I really don't. I am mean, trying to do this, Lord, but I can't. Why? And the Lord will tell you. He said, well, this is the reason why, son, daughter, because of this. Oh, is that what it is? Is that the blockage? Yes. But because you told me the truth, I will tell you the truth of what is stopping you. Amen? Be honest about it, mate. Be honest. God's been an honest God. And the prophetic will come along and reveal that to you. I move in the council area. I move in the spirit of council. And one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of counsel and might. Right? There is the spirit of wisdom, uh, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There is the spirit of counsel and might. Not just counsel, but might. Okay? And then there is the spirit of... I can't think of the other ones now. Uh, yeah, da, 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 yeah, anyway... Spirit of counsel, of might. But it was not only counsel, but the spirit of might. In other words, many times I've sat down with people and I've seen what's in their heart and all of a sudden the spirit of the might of the counsel just comes there and exposes the situation. Just tell them, this is what's going on, bro. You no, 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 no. Their mouth just drops open. How did I know that? The spirit of might. Amen? So it's, and it cleans them up on the spot. Amen. Seen too much of that. Counsel of spirit of, the, of might begins to do that. The spirit of knowledge is the other one. But the seven spirits of God are in his throne. That's why we are kings and priests under God. Only kings will go to the throne and get that knowledge. Amen? And wisdom from the throne room of God. God doesn't just throw his knowledge out. He hides it up in his throne. And the kings and priests who are seeking God will go to the throne every day, every day. And God will give wisdom from the throne room. And when you get the wisdom and knowledge from the throne room, you will come back. The river will flow back and you will minister to people's lives. Amen? Amen. That comes through the ministry of the priest. You're just ministering to the Lord. Amen. Been many a times in my life where I've just said to the Lord, I don't want ministry. I don't want nothing, Lord. I really don't want nothing. I just want to serve you. Just today, just worship you, Lord. It's been in my life, my habit. When I know I'm being crowded by just just things, you know. I just say, Lord, I just put everything away. Just, if this is all hindrances to me now. I just want you. You know, in my house, I tell my wife the other day, in my house, I walk in my house, there's an area in my house where there's an open heaven. Amen? I walk out of that area, I can feel I'm out of it. I've got to go back there and stand there because there's an open heaven. Amen? There's an open heaven between heaven and earth. That's why when Enoch walked on the earth, he went to a specific place where there was an open heaven. Amen? And when he went there, he said, I've been here, I want to go. And the Lord said, come, you please me. Boom. And there are many open heavens that are touching the earth. Many times when I walk on the land, no matter what house I'm walking on or land I'm walking on, I can feel where the heavens, whether there's spiritual heaviness or whether there was an open heaven over it. Amen? I can feel it. Amen. We went out camping the other week, my wife and I, children, went out camping to this particular area. When we went on this place, we were going on a tour. This lady was taking us on a tour. There must have been about 30 of us walking through this tour. And as we were walking, I walked into the spiritual atmosphere, and I just started to cry. Just, just started to cry. Heaviness come on me. My son walked over to me in silence and said, Dad, you heavy, you heavy. I said, okay, Dad. Walked in, I just started to cry. 
And then we walked along a bit further. I didn't want to go any further, you know, because of the heaviness. And I was just dragging my feet along. And we come to this particular area on the spot where you stand on this walkway and you look down on the, on the spring of water, hot water springs that's just piled right up there. And it's been there for millions of years. And uh, then she said, she said this, she said, this is where my aunt, my great, great man, mother was thrown in, her and her baby. And my aunt, I said, that's what I'm crying. I just started to pray for the family, you know. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I had to get out of there. I had to walk away, you know, just because the weight of it. Amen? Just that. The history of it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, folks. <clears throat> uh, but there was an open heaven in my home. And I didn't know it was there. But it was one day I walked in there. Hey, okay, no open heaven here. Push that chair away. Push that chair away. Put that chair away. I stand here. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And when you stand in an open heaven, it's easy to praise God. It's, oh, bless you, Father, bless you. When I walk away, praise you, Lord. <laughs> Battle's out there. I'd rather stay in an open heaven. It happens. And that's just in the house that I rented. Oh, I didn't know that was there. Praise the Lord. But anyway, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, I want you to go to John 7. Go to this. Just go there. John 7. I'm just sharing my heart, folks, what the Lord's put on my heart. Praise the Lord. John 7. And let's go down to verse. <coughs> Is it John 7 that I'm looking for? Yeah. No, it's not this one. Praise the Lord. Anyway, trying to find that place now. I left all my notes home. Praise the Lord. But anyway, if I can remember. They were arguing over Jesus' miracle of healing this person. All the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and they argued over Jesus. And there was a deb debate going on and the people started to divide themselves over the issue of Jesus. Some of them were saying, he's a good man. Others were saying, he's a prophet of God. Others were saying, oh, he's, 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 a, he's a stirrer of people. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees were saying, well, but because of the people, we're going to respond to this. And so when they started to come against Jesus... Jesus turned to them and he started to speak to them, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he put them in their place. He said, you know the law, you know Moses, you know who I am. You know who I am. And he said, now I'm going to go to a place. I said, I'm going to go where you can't go. I'm going to go and, and the time comes where I'm going to move, where you will not be able to come. Then the, the, the Pharisee says, what is he talking about? Where is he going to go? Is he going to go to the Samaritans and teach over there talk to the Chaldeans? Where is he going? But Jesus wasn't talking about that. He was talking about him going away to be the Father, but he was talking about another level. He was talking about when the Spirit of God comes in the book of Acts, he said, that's the place where I'm going. I'm going where the Spirit of the Lord is. Amen? This is where we need to understand a truth. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to take us to another level. Amen? And no one will go there except you and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. No one will know what you're doing. No one will see you. No one will hear you. Amen? Because only God's taken you there. Hallelujah. God's hiding you away for a specific time. Amen? And that's what Jesus said. He said, oh, I'm going to go away where you will not come with me. You can't come. Only the Father will know where he's taken me. Amen? Now, I want you to understand something. That a prophetic ministry is in God. People who have a word from God, God will lock away sometimes, push in the background. 
God will put you away and you will wait. And God, and you will be waiting and waiting and waiting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, it's 2009 now. It's 2018 now, Lord. It's 2020 now, Lord. What are you doing? And God said, I'm, I'm put a word in you. There's a time. I've locked you away. Amen. There was a young lady in the church here at the prayer meeting here, and she was there, and I came over to her, and I just put my hands on her. The anointing, first time I've ever seen this kind of uh, um, be act, acting God, the anointing started kind of like that. Just wrap her up. And I thought, wow, look at this. And it wrapped this lady up. And God says, God spoke a word to her and he said, I'm going to hide you at the moment. No one's going to know you, but when the time comes, I'll unwrap you. Amen. That's what God does. He will hide his prophetic people with a prophetic word until a, a prophetic time. Amen. And he, when that time has come, the prophetic will just step out because they will know they're ready. The season is ready. Why? Because they've stayed in the presence of God. They've stayed in the river. They have been at the ankle. They have lived at the knee. They have lived at the, the loins. And now they want to swim in the river where it's uncontrollable, where they are not in control of the river. But the river now is in control of them. Amen. It'll take them where it wants to go. Praise the Lord. And you will be gladly go along with it. Praise the Lord. Because you know that you've got nothing to defend. You've got nothing to hold on to. There's nothing in you. Amen? That's why Jesus had to die. He had no, nothing of himself to raise himself up. Only the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit was in charge of raising him up. Amen? Jesus spoke and he said, I'm going to die and on the third day I will raise again. But he couldn't do it himself. The Holy Spirit did. Amen? And so we, there are things that, we are at, that are out of our control. And the Holy Spirit wants us to understand the prophetic. Understand that these areas here is limited in God. Stop living on revelation only. And I want to say this, and I'll put this down here. The glory of God is in the river. Sorry. The glory of God is in the river. Amen? When you pay a price, the glory of God will begin to manifest, will begin to come. It's heavy, and it'll stay on you. Amen? It'll manifest through you. But up here is revelation only. Okay? This is light. And we need light to shine in here. But don't stay on light. Don't just live on light. It's too light. It's, there's no weight in it. It's just a showing you of where you're going. Amen? The difference between light and glory is character. If you can have revelation, stirs you up, Praise the Lord, dance around, jump around. You can do all that in Revelation. Oh, tell everybody else what you've seen and what you've done. But your character is still sinful. There are sins that God wants to deal with. Amen? And you never let God deal with that. The moment you start telling the truth, God, I need you. I, I'm, this is the moment you, he'll bring you down to this level here. Then you'll start to understand uh, glory. Then you'll start to understand kingly because your character You've allowed God to deal with your character. When there's no character change, no lifestyle change, you talk about God, you speak about God, too much religion going on, and yet you live the world life. Come on. There's too many of that going on in the house of God. Not just here, across the globe. Amen? Too many of us live in one life and speak in another life. That's mixture. You know? Pastor Daniel preached about that. Amen. I wanted to do that last when you preach, brother, to praise you and to praise for the word that you preached about it, my brother here as well. The kingdom of God. Amen? Because that's what it's all about. The kingdom of God is in our heart. God wants to bring that kingdom out. The kingdom of God is pure, holy, and it's righteous, and it carries glory. Amen? The kingdom of God is not just a kingdom. It's a kingdom. It's his character. Amen? That's, that carries weight. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Tell me, let me, let me, let me. The glory of God, you don't have to say anything. When it comes on you, you just walk. And you'll just stand in the presence of, of an enemy and they will bow. Seen that happen too many times. Just, they will just bow and break down. Or a spirit that's hovering around them or lived in their life, or just go because they know the glory's there. And you don't have to say a word. 
It's in you. It's manifest out of you. Amen? They know. Evil spirits, they know. They understand. And they know when it's their time too. You know? Just grab them by the neck and get out of here. You, they have the, you, you have the rights to. Amen? You've got to understand that this whole point here of the glory of God. I remember a young boy t- taking suicide. He'd taken too many pills and he took a dose of pills and he, went, he was out to it. Got a call, went around, saw him. Soon as I walked into the room, soon as I walked in, the power of God come on me. Amen? And I just said, I, repra- I rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. And I said, now, uh, mother, you need to take him to the hospital and get him checked physically. Okay? The moment he got down to the step <coughs> he come to, God set him free by that bane. Did I have the power? No. I just had the anointing come on me to do that. And that happened many times. Amen? Another young fellow in the tent, just out to it. Just out to it. Just, hey, wake up, wake up. Just walked in the tent. Power of God come on. The glory of God come on you. Just uh, rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. I walked out. <sighs> Big yawn in the tent. <laughs> Cut me out of it. Praise the Lord. And the anointing just lifted. Amen. So when I'm, so what I'm saying is that when character, when the, when the, when the revelation comes, it's, it's great. But God when, God, when you allow God to change your character, then God will take you in deeper. That's what God was doing with Ezekiel, changing his character every step of the way. Amen. You couldn't go there because you're still here. You're busy here. You're doing all the works here. You know? That's why God said to Moses, take off your shoes. Had enough of you walking in your own life. Take off your shoes. For now you stand on holy ground. Your life cannot come this way. You've got to take your lifestyle off. Amen? When Moses took his, his shoe off, he was taking his whole family off. His whole, he was taking his whole belief off. He was taking everything off. Everything that he believed in, he was taking off in his shoes because he walked in that what his fathers taught him. Abraham did the same thing. And there are times when you've got to do that. You've got to say, Lord, I don't want to walk the world of my, even my family life. I don't want to walk that world. I want to follow you, Lord. Amen? Because I can't, I can't live like that anymore. I can only live in the prophetic that you've given me. But I am responsible for, Lord. Amen? That, that is what is so, so true. So oh, I, put a, I put these little plants here. What they represent, every time when God talks to you, and you disobey, a plant of disobedience comes up. And then when a plant grows, oh, brother, can you do that? My son, can you do this? Oh, come back next time. Brother, can you do this? Oh, Lord, I can't do it. I'm busy, Lord. That plant getting bigger. Come back again. The plant getting bigger. All of a sudden, the well is blocked. Your disobedience blocks you from getting to the well. Every time when you disobey God, it stops you from getting closer to God. What you have to do, is what my brother Roy is saying, is that you've got to repent. That's, that's it. When you repent, all this here goes. Lord, I'm so sorry for disobeying you. Lord, I'm sorry for not following you what you told me to do. I was scared, Lord. Good, I'm glad you told me that you're scared, but now I know. Amen. Dear yeah, Lord, I, 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 you know, all this. You know. Jeremiah, Lord, I can't speak. I'm a child. The Lord said, don't say I'm a child anymore. Amen. Because what I'll put in your mouth, I'm going to send you to the nations of the world. But you know what that word child means? That word child means lion. Lion's whelp. It means that I put a lion in you. <laughs> that lion roaring in me for a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of word there. <laughs> a lot of word there. But that lion is roaring. Well, how how's that how'd that happen? Well, God put it there. I, don't, I never put it there. I never sought for it. God just put it there. He breathed it in there. And now I'm talking about it. It's a language. Amen? It's a language. One day I'll talk about the man-child. I won't go there. But it's a language. And God, and that language down inside of me. My language has changed, Brother Roy. It's changed. You probably know that. It's like, God, I'm all about my language. I can taste it. I can taste the lion's language. 
Rambasuki Branda. I can taste the man child's language when I'm praying. What is God doing? Just putting it there and teaching me about it slowly. Amen. Why? Done the ankle, done the knees, done the loins. Now I want to swim in the uncontrollable river. But the river is going to control of me. Amen. We need to understand. And I want to tell you something that if you stay here, let me say this to you, and I want to say this loud, you get this into your heart. You stay here, right, and you die, you leave this planet, right, you will also live there. Because what you sow here, you will reap up in there forever. Sowing and reaping doesn't stop. Amen? When it goes into eternity, it's still reaping and sowing. You will reap what you've sown on earth here. Come on. Hello. Did you ever, ever heard that testimony about that fellow who went to taken to heaven? No, he was taken to hell. He was an atheist. The Lord just took him to hell. Boom. And he walked, the Lord walked him through. All these demonic walked him through. Took him to his cell. And he stood at the cell. And he knew, this follows him. I knew I had to go in there. And he said, I, 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 try, I, I couldn't cry out to my mum, dad, even to the Lord. I couldn't cry out to no one. No one couldn't hear me. And he said, I had to go in. And then they, the demonic behind him, pushing him in. And just as he got, got to the door, a big thunder voice come through. The Lord came through, grabbed him, and took him straight out of it. He got saved. But the thing about it, his testimony was this. You listen carefully. You listen carefully. When he was walking past the cells, he could see people. Back in the early 1800s, 1900s, you could see them all the way through. And then he passed this cell, and as he looked, he saw someone burning up, and just firing on, and it was Hitler. What he sowed, he was ripping it in his cell. Scary stuff, bud. That frightens me. Hello? So whatever we do in life here, whatever we sow, I don't care who you are, Whatever we sow, unrighteous deeds, we will reap that if we don't ever get it right. Amen? We will not, we will not get it right. We will live that in eternity because we've sown it here. That's why God, is in his grace, in his mercy, saved us so that we wouldn't live like that for eternity. Amen? We need to get it right here. You look in the book of Romans chapter 1. You read Romans chapter You go home this afternoon, read the book of Romans chapter 1. It says there's a, you, you read it, there's so much sin within that one chapter. Amen? Men living with other men, all, all this kind of stuff, you know? God was saying, men, this, this is what really touches me, men who, who are righteous men holding the truth in unrighteousness. Righteous people still holding the truth of unrighteousness in their lives. And they, they're going to be accountable to that. We need to change, folks. We need to understand. Let the prophetic talk. Let them, let them bring the word to awaken us up. Let it happen. Don't walk from it. Amen? Just take it on the chin, like my brother would say, Pastor Brian. Take it on the chin, bro. And I said, yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I'll go there. Again. No, you don't need it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Over the years. Take it on the chin. Got to change. Got to be honest to God in your heart. That's what he wants. And then he says, that's what I want, child. Now I can give you what I want to give you. I can trust you with this holy word. I can trust you with my gifts. I can trust you with what I want to give you. Because I know you, you're honest about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I'm at it. Praise the Lord. I want you to keep praying for that young man this morning. Uh, he's just going through a lot of stuff. And um, What's his name? Farron. Just pray for Farron. He was in the church. Farron, um, um, what's that? Farron the bush. Pray for him. Young fella. Just having issues there. But, um, yeah, as I'm preaching, I'm, I'm still listening to him. You know, I'm still thinking about him. 
<clears throat> but um, praise the Lord. That's what it's all about, eh? It's about people. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer, right? <clears throat> Prophet Roy, did you want to say anything? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this morning. I ask, Lord, that you'll just touch our hearts, Lord. Come to the well of our life and say to us, Lord, tell me the truth so that I can bring you to deeper into the well. Father, I pray that our lives will not be a disobedient where we see plants grow up around it and block us from going to the well of your presence. Father, I pray that this is real. You are changing us. I pray, Father, that we will have a heart after you and that we will understand about the, the prophetic Lord. We'll understand why you've called men and women in, the, in, this, <clears throat> in this dimension to wake your people up, to bring your people to reality. <clears throat> and just like the woman, as you exposed her heart and as she spoke the truth, she said, after all, she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And I pray, Father, that each one of us will perceive in our hearts and will taste one more time the prophetic word, that divine, holy word in, in you, that we will become responsible for that word so that, Lord, that we will see lives change for the glory of God and that you will get all the glory for what you've done. And that each one of us can stand as a corporate body and stand and praise your name and lift your name up and give you the glory for what you've done. Lord, I thank you this morning. And I ask this in Jesus' wonderful name, I praise you. And I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for who you are. You're a good God. You're a faithful God. And I just praise you, Lord. Give you the glory. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. Pastor, you want to say anything? God bless you. I'll release you. Go in the name of the Lord. And I'll see everybody up there in the coffee room. Amen. <laughs>